morning everyone this is uh, martin zender and you're at the revelation series from where i sit it is sunday september 10th i'm literally broadcasting to you from a hurricane it is in progress in fact we lost power um literally 10 minutes ago it's 8 54 on sunday morning it's wednesday to you it's going on right here outside my door. And again, I'm operating on computer power now. My battery is well charged. I'm at 98%. So I think I'll be good uh, throughout this broadcast. Thank you for all your well wishes and your prayers. I'm going to dim the lighting a little bit to preserve battery power if you don't mind. Thank you for all your concern, all your prayers. I think we got pretty fortunate here in Fort Lauderdale. Although within, the, within two hours, the eye of Hurricane Irma is going to hit naples that's exactly due west of us 109 miles away across alligator alley i've been there it's a nice little drive it's a beautiful uh city and i i really hope for the best for those folks out there but right now i want to talk about the seven ecclesias because i believe that the seven ecclesias mentioned in revelation are future Ecclesias. I'm believing that more and more now. It's a tricky topic, but we have to look at the timing. We have to look at John's exact wording of when he is seeing, talking to these Ecclesias. And when he is seeing them, when he is getting instructions from God concerning them, what is strange is that he's writing to them, but he's writing to Ecclesias in the future. Let me ask you this. Don't you think that at the crisis of the eons, well, not the crisis, but at a definite crisis of the Ionian times, that is the passage from the first three evil eons to the two good eons, don't you think that the people going through that singular, amazing, unique time would be given instruction? John is writing them instruction. He's not writing people of his era instruction. So he's writing through the annals of time. He's writing directly to people who will exist but who do not exist while he's writing i mean you could say paul to the romans yes paul is definitely writing to the contemporary people in the, in the body of christ in rome paul's definitely writing to the colossians uh james to the 12 tribes but this is different john to the seven ecclesias and asia minor it was asia oh the only electricity is came well wow, that's well, the power just came back on. If you're watching the cam here, let me make an adjustment here. Regroup. Okay, well, that's nice. Things look a lot better. Swell. I hope they stay that way. Um, anyway, it's different here. I'm going to read you the exact uh, wording. And one way to do that is to quote uh, the book of Revelation from John himself. Here's the tricky part. Verse 4. Well, why don't I just start from the beginning, Revelation 1.1. The unveiling of Jesus Christ, which God gives to him to show his slaves what must occur swiftly, and he signifies it, dispatching through his messenger to his slave, John, who testifies to the word of God in the testimony of Jesus Christ, whatever he perceived. Now, it's true that we're reading this, and it's true that John's contemporaries might have read this, but this was recorded and it was saved and it's in this book, but it's specifically designed for the people of the era of the end. Happy is he who is reading and those who are hearing the word of the prophecy and who are keeping that which is written in it, for the era is near. All right, now well, maybe John thought, it could be John thought the era was near, uh, but he's writing to Ecclesias that he saw while he was in the Lord's day. I'm getting, I'm going to be reading you quotes from Dr. Bullinger throughout this show. Now, let me, let me go to, let me continue here. And then we're going to dip into, uh, Dr. Bullinger. Okay. Verse four, here's the critical part. John to the seven ecclesias, which are in the province of Asia, but the R is in light face type. So it would be John to the seven ecclesias in Asia. That's all. If you take the light face type out, and light face type, I remind you, are words that have no representation in the original Greek. The concordant version very handily points out the difference between words which have a corresponding word in the Greek and English words that have been added 
to make readable English. The words that have been added are in light face type, but every word in the concordant version in dark face type has a corresponding word in the Greek. Now, so I'm going to read this now without the light face type words. John to the seven ecclesias in the Asia. The word province isn't there. The word which and are aren't there. So this does not have to be limited to John's time. It might not be applying to John's time at all. But look, even if it did, I'd have no problem. Let's say that the word are is in dark face type. Let's try it now. John to the seven ecclesias which are in the province of Asia. They will be in the province of Asia at the time of the end, which is modern day Turkey. But John would never have heard of Turkey. And besides, we know how KG God is. He's not going to put this thing on the surface and say Turkey. He's going to say Asia Minor. So thousands of what they call eschatologists, thousands of um, Bible expositors have looked at this passage and they've either made it contemporary ecclesias of John or they have made it to represent ages of the church period. There's the Philadelphia period, the Ephesus period, the Thyatira period. Now, that's very creative and uh, such a interpretation is probably enhanced by the smoking of marijuana or something like that because it's very fanciful very dreamy very what if these churches represent long hundreds of years of ages and what if we can make up characteristics and what if we can look at all the characteristics given concerning these seven ecclesias and we can make it apply to certain kinds of christians isn't that nice <sighs> take another drag of the cigarette because that is not giving God credit for meaning what he says here and saying what he means. We do that here at the Revelation series. I personally do it, and I have been doing it for 30 years running now, and I'm going to continue to do it. We're not going to lose it here. John, to the seven ecclesias which are in the province of Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who is coming, and from the seven spirits which are before the throne of God, and from Jesus Christ, faithful witness, firstborn of the dead, and the suzerain of the kings of the earth. To him who is loving us and looses us from our sins by his blood and makes us a kingdom of priests. That's just for Israel, makes us a kingdom of priests. Who's us? Israel. We are not a priesthood people. You and I, we are in the members of the, we're members of the body of Christ. Israel has been the go-between, designed to be the go-between, will be the go-between, between God and the rest of the world. All right, let's go down to, well, verse 8 is very good. Well, no, verse 7 is very good. Lo, he is coming with clouds and every eye shall be seeing him. This would be really great information for the saints of the era of the end to have. Those also who stab him and all the tribes of the land shall be grieving over him. Yea, amen. Quote, uh, verse 8, I am the Alpha and the Omega is saying the Lord God, who is and who was, who is coming, the Almighty. Here we go. John, verse 9. I, John, your brother. Is John still the brother of contemporary Jews? Yes, he is, because he's writing to help them, is my contention. I, John, your brother, and joint participant in the affliction and kingdom and endurance in Christ Jesus, came to be in the island called Patmos. So far now, John is in on an island in the off the coast of Greece, which is still there today, and it's still called the same thing, Patmos. And, of course, he's still the brother of people, Jews, today. And, of course, he was a joint participant in the affliction and kingdom and endurance in Jesus Christ. These things are age-lasting. These things apply today for suffering Jews, for suffering Israelites, for those of the lost tribes, as it does for John, who was maybe exile to this island, but possibly just went there under the uh, direction of the Lord so that he would have a quiet place under a palm tree with no distractions from cell phones and things like that in order to receive this revelation and to write it down. I, John, your brother and joint participant in the affliction and kingdom and endurance in Jesus Christ, came to be in the island called Patmos because of the word of God. 
what I'm reading to you is the word of God. John went to the island of Patmos because of this, what I'm reading to you. And because of the testimony of Jesus Christ, I came, here it is, 10, verse 10, Revelation chapter 1. I came to be in spirit in the Lord's day. Now, why can't John be writing this to seven ecclesias that will exist in the future? I came to be in spirit in the Lord's day, and I hear behind me a voice, loud as a trumpet, saying, what you are observing, write into a scroll and send to the seven ecclesias, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamum, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, to Laodicea. So I must admit that it sounds like he is to send it to churches that would have existed in that day. But from verse 10 on, he's in the Lord's day. That means he's no longer to be considered by us on the island of Patmos, off the coast of Greece. He is now considered to be in the Lord's day. I don't know if you can hear the wind out there, but it's uh, picking up. And by noon, we're probably going to get the heavy duty stuff. But, you know, we've gotten pretty fortunate as far as where this, where this thing is going. I am thinking and praying for people on the West Coast in Naples up near Tampa, where the eye could, the eye's down. It's right in between Cuba and the mainland. And in fact, it's hammering uh, the keys right now. Key West has got some problems. So, thinking about those folks there. I came to be in spirit in the Lord's day. I hear behind me a voice loud as a trumpet saying, what you are observing, write into a scroll, send to the seven ecclesias. So picture John, he's speaking to contemporary, to people who will exist in these ecclesias. It's like he's writing directly to people who are on the brink of going through the tribulation. And we know that people of John's day, his contemporaries, were not on the brink of going through the tribulation. They were not. People argue about when this letter was written. Some people say it was written before 70 AD. And these are the preterists, because they want to insist that when Titus, the captain of the Roman army, sacked Jerusalem in 70 AD, prophesied by Christ, that that was the tribulation. They say that was the tribulation. Yeah. All the bulls and the wrath and the locusts and a third of humanity dying and the rivers turned to blood and the uh, the asteroid called Absin hitting the water. The 200 million supernatural cavalry killing. That did not happen in 70 AD. The armies of Rome torched Jerusalem and knocked down some big rocks. That is not the seven spirits spirits which unleash the seven bowls. That's not the sun being darkened for half the day. It's not the sun growing ten times its strength and scorching humanity. Please. But there's also an argument that John wrote Revelation post AD 70. That interpretation kills the preterists. They can't have it because it destroys their position. In order to maintain a position that John is writing to a group of people about to go through Titus, baby Titus, no. Okay, it was rough. People were killed. It's, it was a slaughter. They were told to flee. Some of them stayed. Kind of reminds me of myself here. but I'm not making light of it. Although I call him baby Titus only in relation to the coming indignation. It's possible John wrote Revelation post-70 AD, in which case they don't have a leg to stand on. I don't think they have a leg to stand on anyway. I think they've already fallen down legless because none of the events of Revelation describe a Roman commander knocking down a city, one city in the Middle East, and a small one at that. Sorry, doesn't compute. I think you will agree if we all keep our heads here, use logic and take God at his word and quit trying to allegorize everything like many people do when they get to the unveiling of Jesus Christ. So I came to be in spirit in the Lord's day and I hear behind me a voice loud as a trumpet saying what you are observing, are observing where in the Lord's day. He's observing stuff in the Lord's day. 
right into a scroll, send it to the seven ecclesias. Send it to the seven ecclesias. That's what he's doing now. It's being sent. It's still here. It's in this collection of writings that I have in my Bible, and it will be sent in a special way to the seven ecclesias. That is out called groups of people who will exist as refugees, spiritual refugees, being miraculously sustained by Christ, probably by messengers, that is angels, um, in Turkey, modern day Turkey, who will be poised to enter the portal of the tribulation to walk through the iron curtain between Eon, Eon 3 and Eon 4. And again, not only that, but the giant curtain between the good eons, the evil eons and the good eons. And I turn about and look for the voice which spoke with me. And turning about, I perceived seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like a son of mankind, dressed in a garment reaching to the feet, girded about at the breasts with a golden girdle. Now his head and hair are white as white wool, as snow, and his eyes as a flame of fire, and his feet like white bronze, as fired in a furnace, and his voice is as the sound of many waters he has in his right hand seven stars out of his mouth a sharp two-edged blade is issuing and his countenance is as the sun appearing in its power john perceives he falls down is dead and now we're going to get the interpretation and what what don't we do here in, in the revelation series we do not interpret god's interpretations so we're going to read this and we're going to believe what it says because god is interpreting the lampstands and the spirits Jesus Christ says to John, I have the keys of death and the unseen. Write then what you perceived and what they are and what is about to be occurring after these things. What is about to be occurring? It is about to be occurring as John is has been transported to the Lord's Day. In the Lord's Day, it's about to be occurring. The preterists, the people who think that all these things have already been fulfilled, yeah, preterists. I don't know what that word means. It's a ridiculous word you might as well just say people who believe that revelation the events thereof are historical already happened absurd you have to spiritualize away everything in the book no we don't do that right then what you perceived and what they are and what is about to be occurring after these things after the things that john is then seeing and it truly that is about to be occurring it's about to be occurring from the perspective of one who has been transported whether in body or in spirit to the lord's day the lord's day can be said to include the tribulation the lord's day you might say doesn't like officially start with a return of christ until yeah the return of christ however the Lord's Day is also the final pangs. Also, the Lord's Day, also the, the tribulation, the bulls. How do I know that? Because this is called the Lord's Day. John says, I was transported into the Lord's Day. From that perspective, he goes into the wrath, the bulls, the indignation of God, the hailstones, the locusts. That's how I know this stuff's in the Lord's Day. It's included in the Lord's Day. It is true. The thousand year millennial kingdom is also the Lord's Day. Okay, the day of God does not occur until the new heavens and the new earth. What then you have perceived, what they are, what is about to be occurring after these things, the secret of the seven stars which you perceived in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are messengers of the seven ecclesias and the seven lampstands are seven ecclesias. Simple. Let me read that again because this is God interpreting his own word. And once we have the interpretation, we do not interpret the interpretation. Sorry, I'm just listening to the wind there. After these things, the secret of the seven stars, which you perceived in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are messengers of the seven ecclesias, and the seven lampstands are seven ecclesias. Now, the messengers of the ecclesias are not, I don't believe, supernatural beings. The word messenger, I often use messenger for angel or for a celestial being because this is the word God uses. 
angelos, angelos, whatever in, in the Greek. Uh, it's what it literally means. You could apply messenger to a human being. Yes, yeah, somebody who delivers your newspaper is a messenger, is an angelos, is an angel. Oh, go greet the angel bringing us the Miami Herald. Okay, that's a, that's a messenger. So you have to look at the context. A messenger could be Gabriel. Messenger could be your mailman. Messenger could be the kid who brings you the Miami Herald. That's a messenger. A messenger could be a chief of an ecclesia in Turkey because every one of these ecclesias listed here is going to have a corresponding messenger. And this really does agree with the way the synagogues were run uh, back in the day that there was a chief, there was a messenger for each synagogue. There was one representative person, kind of like the king of the synagogue, the president of the synagogue, the prime minister of the synagogue. And I believe that's who we're looking at here to the messenger. And so, and again, the lampstands are seven ecclesias. All right. I'm running out of time here, and uh, I'm glad the electricity came back on. That's uh, fantastic. This is, I mean, a really different viewpoint, but it has legitimacy. And what Dr. Bullinger is going to tell you, Dr. Bullinger, of course, is dead. He lived in the late 1800s. I forget when he died. He was a contemporary of A. E. Nock, although he was, I think, older than... A. Enoch. I'm going to share with you from his book on the Revelation. And he says there is scant evidence that these ecclesias existed. And he says there is no evidence that any of these ecclesias mentioned had retained any sort of big time letter. And back in the day, if you had a letter from John, if this thing came to the ecclesias, if these ecclesias did exist back in the day, um, and a couple of them did in name. Um, none of them have retained any special letter. If you had a letter from John coming to you, who was a celebrity of the circumcision, you would retain it. But even tradition from the even the earliest centuries has no record of any letter being distributed to them. See, I'm not saying these ecclesias did not exist. This is one of those tricky things God does, where he gets people off track who don't look carefully. It, I'm fine if every single one of these ecclesias existed in the first century. I'm fine with that. That would get a lot of people off the track to say that well, obviously John's writing to his contemporaries, but there will be modern day ecclesias at the brink, at the crisis of this eon who will be poised and primed to go through the tribulation. This word is especially for them. They're going to need instruction of what to do. And Believe me, this book of Revelation, while it's dismissed by many in the body of Christ, and I understand that, Paul's letters are for us, so we can look at this and say, well, it's not for us. Some people have said to me, Martin, why are you even going through the book of Revelation? Because it's happening today. It's happening today. But this is going to be especially, vitally, this is going to be picked over with a fine-tooth comb during the tribulation. Because when Israel becomes enlightened, and the body of Christ is gone, Paul's letters will be irrelevant. Nobody can be in the body of Christ anymore. That window will have closed. It's done. You might as well just rip Paul's letters out of the Bible, which some people do now. That's a little premature. And, you know, but in the, when the tribulation starts and the body of Christ is gone, the Jews, the enlightened Israelites, are going to go through this book, Revelation. They're not going to be reading Romans. They're not going to be reading Ephesians. Because, again, that those books will have been rendered useless. Now they're our roadmap. Then, Revelation, the unveiling of Jesus Christ, will be the roadmap of those Israelites about to go through the tribulation and out the other side. And John is writing this letter to them.